Céline, congratulations on the film. I've got to say, the ending left me completely devastated, but we'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> uh, your previous films have all been in very modern settings, but now you're in 18th century France, you're in a very isolated island community. Why did you make that change? Well, um, I must say I didn't, I didn't want to do like a period piece. It wasn't like I didn't want to, you know, didn't think about, oh, I'm going to make my period piece film. I really became thinking, began thinking about the film, uh, thinking about how can I craft this love story uh, and to make it um, very iconic and modern. Um, and um, how can I link a love dialogue and a creation dialogue? So, you know, I began to think about painting and then s decided that, you know, I would head for the past. Also as a um, yeah, departure from my pre previous work and, and kind of a challenge also, you know, because it was like a compass to actually make, make the most contemporary objects. You know, a lot of film are looking at the contemporary times, but they're not contemporary object so I felt like okay if I'm doing this period piece thing then it will have to be yeah I'm, I'm gonna have to be very 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 careful about about yeah the whole modernity of it without anachronism which was a fun game to play and you wrote the story yourself where did the inspiration for the story come from well yeah it's th that's quite uh, I guess singular because it's pretty rare that a period piece is not adapted from a, a book or uh, an historical uh, event um, but you know what, that book hasn't been written. Maybe I would have adapted it if it existed. Like the, this great love story between two women in the 18th century, it's not written, so you have to write it. That's basically, you know, it tells a lot about a woman artist uh, throughout history. Also, you know, I could have picked one of these women artists that were uh, successful at the time, there were hundreds of them, and go for the biopic dynamic, uh, but didn't want to do that because, you know, would have, we would have looked at one strong women as they say uh, like t totally making it in this difficult world and it's kind of a political program that I'm, that, that is not respectful um, regarding the destiny of these women I wanted to invent one so that I could talk about all of, all of them because there were you know like really hundreds of them and even here in, you know in, you had one of the most um, talented artists Angelica Kaufman mm -hmm. and she's also an inspiration for the character You've talked about the love story between the two central characters, but there's also another relationship, which is the friendship between them mm -hmm. and the servant. Yeah. Why did you introduce that well, part I of the story? To, to really wanted to talk about sorority and how you know solidarity among women can really abolish abolish social hierarchy, um, and wanted to have three ages of life. Also, you know that servant, she's seventeen, and those two women there in their thirties and uh, and the mother, she's a fifty year old and I really wanted her also to be part of the group. You know, we always talk about the three women, but actually this fourth women and uh, we didn't want her to be this bitter old women, uh, and make that actually that she would be young and have her own project and desire and to to work around the horizontality between all these four women, even though they are not from the same social class and they're not supposed to hang out this way. But you know what, this is quite true to life, I think, among women, that uh, you know, they can, sorority brings that kind of friendship and a new dynamic. One of the things I noticed about the film was that there's no real musical soundtrack to mm -hmm. it at all, apart from the music at the end, and we will come on to the end in a mm -hmm. moment. But I just wondered why you, didn't want any music in the film. Well, yes, that was part of the plan since the beginning. Like um, I, w I knew that I would make a film without music, which was quite a challenge because um, a love story without the music is like, no, it shouldn't happen. I mean, we all have the soundtrack. If we think love story, we have the soundtracks. And even, you know, the love stories in our lives, they have their own soundtrack. Um, but it was really a matter of reconstitution. Uh, I wanted to put the audience in the same position as the character. They are frustrated because there's no beauty, something you have to search for. Like you find a book, it's really important, you hear music, it's pretty rare. And so I wanted, yeah, that sense of equality so that the audience, when music occurs, because it's also a movie about how um, love is an education to art and how also art consoles from love. So I wanted this birth of beauty, this, this, I wanted it to be like, yeah, feel new, like a new feeling for the audience, like hearing 
music and how powerful it is um, uh, like you would hear it for the first time so it's that experience that we are building through this lack of music and that devastating ending which blew me away and an awful lot of other people as well was that one long take or several how did you do it yeah it's one long take um, we did it uh, it's a two three minutes uh, take um, and well you know this is this this relies a lot on the shoulder of a Nell, I must say um, and focus guy also <laughs> uh, but uh, you know that scene I had that scene in mind since the beginning it was actually one of the first scene that I wrote it's you know the, the film was heading toward that scene like that was a compass and and um, that was the yeah the scariest scene I had to <laughs> shoot for my whole career um, and it's only three takes uh, but actually you know it's always one I mean we had one that was the one it is absolutely devastating Céline merci beaucoup <laughs>